friends from Downtown Books and Gallery. Today I would like to uh, demystify a little bit of the um, concept of collecting art. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the word listed. You hear the word listed a lot when you are buying um, art sometimes in an antique market, in a swap meet, or even uh, in a gallery. And they, they will say the word, this is a listed artist. And you don't know what that means. So some of you may not know what I mean. Well, today I want to solve the, the mystery of listed. Uh, listed is usually said in the trade when an artist is included in a book, when an artist has a certain importance or auction records. For example, who was who in American art? You find a lot of important artists in here. Davenport, this is like the Bible, everybody's here. And also you have Ascard.com online, which are mostly the method that most of us use these days. Uh, but I like to keep the books anyways, because every now and then I find somebody that may not be on Ascard, it, may, it might be in another book. So we have the Benizet also, which is a 10 volume, um, 10 volume book. A uh, uh, French book, actually, and it's probably the earlier of all these publications. And it's a very good book if you find some old master painting, something from the 1700s or 1800s. Chances are that your artist might be documented by Benese. Uh Mr. Eden Hughes did a great job of research, uh, researching more than, uh, I don't even know, uh, hundreds of uh, California artists that uh, lived in the... Uh, actually going back to the 18th century into the 20th century up to 1940. So some of the more obscure artists you may find in, in uh, Hughes that you might not find information anywhere else. The way this, these artists make it into the books is usually because auction records uh, and the, the auction houses uh, report the uh, auction price to the uh, publisher of the books. And so that's how they get a hold of this information. With that in mind, uh, so now uh, you know that the word listed actually means that the artist that you're trying to purchase or you are uh, thinking about purchase is indeed included in some of the important books. Sometimes you will find somebody who is on Davenport, uh, but it might not be on Oscar, or somebody who is on Who Was Who in American Art, but not on Benese. Uh That doesn't mean much, as long as whomever art that you're buying is um, is in one of these books it's always a good thing because what that tells you is that the art you're buying has a certain importance and a certain value that uh, will prevail through the years so you're buying something that will possibly stay in the family is not uh, it's not a piece of art that, that is um, disposable, like something you would buy in a general store or a department store where you might buy some kind of a print for say a hundred or two hundred dollars and you know six years down the line you just give it to the Salvation Army because there is no uh, intrinsic value to it. It's simply something that uh, you use for decoration and, and it's totally worth a zero. Uh, within a few years. Actually, it will be worth zero as you walk out of the store. So, um, uh, what we like to do is uh, recommend to our uh, beginner collector, somebody who might be thinking about maybe I should spend a little more uh, money on, a, on an actual painting by somebody somewhat known, or like everything else, you might want to start at an entry level where you're not buying, like you're not buying a Picasso or something like that. You can start with something much lesser that it still could be, uh, uh, have a lot of quality and it could be a lot of fun to find out the biography and the information on this artist. Uh, for example, here we have a piece by uh, Joseph uh, Rauman. It's a recent piece we acquired recently. Uh, and this, this uh, uh, Rauman guy has a, a very good biography. Here you can see it in the camera. It's uh, possibly done in the 1930s in, in, in Paris, somewhere around Notre Dame. And the price of this uh, lovely little piece is only $395. But this is definitely an original painting by the hand of uh, uh, Rauman, which you can find in just about uh, a couple of these books. Uh, 
He's definitely on Davenport and he's also uh, listed on Ascard uh, with many auction records, some of them in the thousands. So this is this will be a, a, a great uh, entry level uh, acquisition. Uh, here, for example, is a, a little watercolor by a guy named Ludovic Alun, French, French uh, 20th century, and this painter. Uh, was active, uh, uh, he actually passed away in 1941, he was born in 1855. So he was painting at the beginning of the century, uh, the 20th century, and he was a post-impressionist. And this is a really high uh, quality painting and he's got plenty of information. And this is something you can take home for about $300. And it will be a great beginning piece for you to start your adventure of collecting art. Now, if you want to, uh, invest in the more important artists uh, that are also well documented, the price starts going a little higher, but your investment is also more solid. Also, um, works on, uh, on oil and canvas, uh, oil paintings, tend to be a little more expensive. As these two works are on paper, oil paintings tend to be a little uh, higher in price. Uh, example, we have this Conrad Buff here, which is a um, 24 by 16, and this painting is $1,250. Conrad Buff is so well documented, uh, American artist, was active during the 1940s, 50s, all the way to his death in 1974. And he was a disciple or a friend also of uh, Maynard Dixon, a uh, very, very important American artist. Here's another Buff. Uh, this one is a 36 by 24, and, and this one is also at a reasonable price. Uh, I don't have it right in front of me, but it's definitely uh, negotiable, and, and it will be a wonderful uh, uh, addition or a, a sort of a beginner's uh, a collection or even a, any professional, uh, well, well experienced collector would love to have that in their collection. Uh, here we have another very, uh, very important and, and well-documented American artist, Emil Cosa Jr. He was active uh, mostly in Los Angeles, California, during the 1950s and 60s. Mostly famous for, uh, well, these notes are very famous also by him, he, very typical work by him, but he also painted uh, and documented the growth of Los Angeles architecture during the 1930s, 40s. He uh, 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 painted uh, uh, paintings of the city hall, some of the freeways as they were being built, Chavez Ravine, Chinatown, etc. Those are very uh, highly collectible and uh, pricey uh, artworks by Emil Cosa Jr. But we are offering this, this one here, we have uh, several more mostly a small abstracts by him and uh, you can also come and call us for a price on, on this painting it's a uh, very reasonable also sort of a beginner collector piece it's, uh, it's not very expensive so anyway i would like to add that all of these paintings are in our new website dtbooksonart.com and uh, there you will find the prices you will find information and also you can find our phone number and you can give us a call anytime if you need uh, any, any help with any information regarding the art. So I hope I uh, kind of solved some of the mystery uh, involving uh, art collecting and I hope you stay safe and visit us soon.